The scope of aviation psychology has increased dramatically over the years. Right now, what they're doing is everything from assessment, selection, fitness for duty, return to duty, performance enhancement, family support, and all the way up into organizational assessment, consultation, training development, the full scope of the application of behavioral science to the mission of flying, fighting, and winning. To be able to be proficient in speaking aviation and to be able to do the things that we need to do for the aircrew and the operators, actually, we are put on aeronautical orders and we are passengers in whatever aircraft are at our installation, monitoring the human factors in both the training pipeline and in aviation itself. Taking care of the mental health um, and optimizing it from you know, the front end of the preventative side and then having good resources available to help them understand when their mental health um, is being degraded and they need to take a knee, um, that's absolutely paramount for our air crew and our aviators. Depending on the mission we're working with, uh, where we are placed, whether it's in a safety shop, uh, we're working with NASA, we're working with the research, or we're working with a special operations unit that flies pretty highly uh, complex missions with a lot of stress. Um, we can tailor what we deliver to that population because of the, the background and the training we have. We talk about stress and we talk about fatigue all the time in terms of the aviators and they're so used to pushing it off and just saying that they're good to go and we're trying to create the culture where it's okay for them to say, I can actually take a little bit and I need to be at my best when I fly. We've been at war for a big part of 20 years and you know just because you're air crew just because you're a pilot you're flying does not mean that you don't have you know life problems or situational problems or mental health issues um, and we need to be out there and we need to be present uh, my job is you know to keep you you know mentally healthy to keep you safe and to keep you flying I absolutely believe that this will help prevent mishaps in the future and reduce risk. I think that when people are more willing to talk about the risk and more willing to look at the risk, not necessarily from an outside in, but from an inside out. So I need to have my human weapon system, my own system. I need to know when those alerts are going off and telling me, hey, we have a problem here and systems are not functioning 100%. They need to know that and being able to recognize that, be aware of it and communicate it will definitely decrease the risk that we're willing to take on and then that will ultimately prevent a lot of mishaps. Becoming an aviation psychologist is obviously you have to be a credentialed psychologist in the Air Force. From there, you need to have done at least one full assignment in a clinic, and then you can apply for the Aviation Psychology Fellowship, which is through the uh, AFIT application process. And it's a competitive selection, but if you're selected, we have one to two positions each cycle, and then you train for a full year in aviation. And after that, you would earn your, what we call D-Shred or aviation. Alternately, if you were selected into a D-Shred position, but you didn't yet have the training, then you get that in the three years that you're on the job there under supervision that whole time. It gives us a wide breadth, if you will, of those skill sets. So human performance from a human factors perspective, a kind of a sport performance perspective, depending on the type of uh, air crew you're working with, and then the air medical expertise to understand what are the left and right limits in terms of diagnoses, treatment, uh, when they need to be down, when they can be put back up. An aviation psychologist does all of the most fun things in the Air Force. So if you can think of anything super fun that you could possibly do as an Air Force psychologist, you get to do that as an aviation psychologist. It's amazingly fun that every once in a while you just take one day and go be a passenger in whatever airframe is available. Um, it is for sure the best job in the whole Air Force, and I highly recommend it. <laughs>